Today we are going to cover three stories. Uh, Russia is symbolic victory in Bakhmut, and also we're going to talk about U.S. to give 2.5 billion dollars in food assistance to Africa, African continent. I mean countries. Uh, is alone uh, in favor of freedom of speech, or is only when he is not being criticized? So these are the news we're going to cover today. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on with Elon. And, and I am Bob Sankarian, and subscribe to this channel to help us grow. Thanks for watching. Russia focused uh, attention on Bakhmut, and they are determined to take control of the, this Ukrainian city. Well, on the other hand, uh, Ukrainian troops are now willing to, to let them uh, take back the city. And then they're fighting like lions to halt um, the Russian advance in Bakhmut. But let's say that if Russians managed to recapture uh, Bakhmut, it would be a strategic victory for Vladimir Putin. Why? Because it would help him control the direct line from, um, from the movement of their military assets in East and facilitate their connection with Crimea. Not only Bakhmut, but also the city of Avdivska. It's very important for both army to control, Ukrainian and Russians. The defense and, and the liberation of these settlements in the vicinity will cause both sides supply situation to get worse. The settlement of uh, Artemovsky is crucial to Ukrainians to hold the city if they want to avoid a complete encirclement from Russians. First fighting is going on there um, as the Ukrainian army is holding its ground. Regardless of many losses, Wagner groups are pushing harder toward Bakhmut, trying to, trying to break uh, Ukrainian lines of defense to take control of Bakhmut. However, pro-Russian media have been, um, they have been reporting that Wagner troops have gained full control of some neighborhood settlements and senior enterprise in Bakhmut, uh, burning everything in their way. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why is Bakhmut so important for Russia and Ukraine? Well, let me tell you that the reason why both opposing forces are fighting uh, firstly for Bakhmut is because of its location on a strategic line of supplies between two separatist regions Luans and Donets, which are called Dambas. And whoever controls Bakhmut may be able to get access to Militopol, another city, another very important city, strategically. And Russian commanders do not want to lose their line of supplies, neither um, they want to lose any other occupied um, territory in Ukraine. The battle is intense. Both sides are losing troops between 80 to 100 daily, which make Bakhmut earn the nickname Meat Grinder. If, uh, if Bakhmut fell again, it would destroy Ukrainian supply lines and give Russian troops the ability to press on toward Slovyansk and Kramatorsk, uh, which are a very important city as well, held by Ukrainians. And both cities give access to Donbass region, which is a very rich region in Ukraine. The reason for this war is the resource-rich region of Donbass, which the Russian Federation wants to keep in its control. Russia is pressing forward to completely capture Donetsk Oblast, which, uh, which given, would give them access to energy-rich Donbass and also launch a bigger campaign to seize other part of Ukraine and maybe other countries. Every Russian victory on the field comes with a high cost of troops and arms. This is why I've always said that uh, this war is an ego and power war. There are no winners. Only losers, the ones that suffer the most are the Ukrainian population, civilian population and the innocent Russian troops that are being forced to fight this war. At the same time, I hope this war serves as a wake-up call to NATO so they stop provoking Russia and the bullying other other countries, other weak countries. 
like what they did in Libya and Yemen. And if we all want a better world, we should work toward creating peaceful and respectful environments for all humans to coexist without supremacy ideology because we are all humans and no one is superior to other. All right. So we're gonna talk about US to give $2.5 billion in food assistance to Africa. Yesterday, Thursday, President Biden announced that he will release $2.5 billion to assist Africa with food, which, uh, which he called humanitarian assistance and to address acute food insecurity in Africa. Well, my question is, do African countries need this? No. Let me tell you why. Africa has more than 60% of the world is uncultivated land. Therefore, agricultural production should be the main focus of African leaders to secure food for all Africans. We do not need a charity, but leadership. That's what Africa needs. I can assure you that majority of African presidents are dumb. They're not smart and easily fooled. They have no commitment to the people that elected them. Their main commitment is to themselves and the cronies around them. They have no leadership ability to lead or understand what they need to do that will benefit the people in general. This is why we are now um, respected by Westerners and Asians. We as Africa need to change this slavery man mindset the slavery mentality, which is the reason why our people still suffering. And because of the poor judgment of their leaders, which create revolts and consequently coup d'etat. Because if if every African country elect leaders with a, a visionary mindset, there will not be reasons for coup d'etat. You know, if a president is doing what is right to uh, what is right to develop his country then military officials wouldn't see reasons for revolt and create chaos. Africa need good leadership, not food assistance. We have great leaders like uh, Akwe Ibon State Governor, uh, Governor Emmanuel, who is doing great, great things in Nigeria because he's a good, he's a good leader. You know, he's, he's not a loser or a puppet, but a leader that loves his country loves his country Nigeria and loves his Akwa Ibom people. He knows what he's supposed to do. This is what Africa needs, not aid. And I can assure you that these leaders will get this money and use it for themselves, not to fight food security, not to fight food security. They will steal it and buy houses in Europe and other parts of the world. This is how dumb they are. They can even uh, love themselves they are the my Europeans who uh, would give a them, who they give a damn about them, but they are too stupid to understand what they are doing. You know they're gonna keep being corrupt. Is Elon Musk in favor of freedom of speech or only when he's not being criticized? What you guys think? Well, Twitter suspend the account of six journalists for criticizing Elon Musk on Thursday. Ryan Mack of the of the New York Times, Drew Arwell of the Washington Post, Harold Roper, independent journalist, Daniel Sullivan from CNN, and Matthew Binder of Mashable, and others. It wasn't FC Learn of the reason for suspension, but these journalists have been criticizing Elon Musk a lot, and he doesn't want these journalists to track his locations. So Musk uh, tweeted that uh, any account that posts the real-time location info of anyone will be suspended because it's a physical safety violation for him uh, for posting uh, links to sites with real-time location info on Twitter. Okay, so when Elon Musk purchased Twitter in October for around 44 billion dollars, he said that uh, he would expand. Uh, freedom of speech on the platform that no one would uh, would be bothered for expressing their thoughts freely So that can allow more people to participate in public conversation freely without being oppressed 
he even allowed former president Donald Trump, if you guys remember, to come back to Twitter after being blocked from his account after January 6, 2021 riots on Capitol Hill. So Elon even tweets that he hopes that um, even his worst critics remain on Twitter because that is what freedom of speech means. I guess he changed his not. I guess he changed his mind about freedom of speech. And let me know what you think about uh, you know this topics for today. And thank you for watching. I'm Bob Sankarian. All right. And do not forget to subscribe, like, and share this this video. Okay. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.